Today is Sunday, August 28th, 2022. It is also day 202 of Blender, and I'm going to do another um, milk splashing sorts of animation with a glass cup. So I'm going to go to Blender, and I'm going to go to the top, scroll down to Geometry Nodes. I'm going to hide the spreadsheet, and I'm going to click on New for a new Geometry Node system. And with this, I'm going to make the shape of the cup. So I'm going to disconnect the input from the output, and then I'll go to Add, and then I'll go to Mesh Primitives and add a cone and connect that to the output. And to make the shape, I'm just going to increase the radius of the top a little bit, increase the depth just a little bit, and then to have more of a visual, I'll change the fill type to None because a cup doesn't have, you know, it usually doesn't have a closed section at the top. Um, and I'll just maybe put the radius bottom a little bit kind of like that. Right, and then I'll go ahead and go to this little panel over here, click on the arrow, and then apply. And then I'm going to go to Layout, right-click, Shade Smooth to get rid of those lines. So Control z right, right-click, Shade Smooth, and it gets rid of those lines. Now, the problem is I have an open section at the bottom. So to fix this, I'll go into Edit Mode um, at the top left corner. I'm going to go to Edge Select, and then while I'm pressing Alt, I'm going to select the bottom edge. And then I'm going to press on F to create a new face from that edge. And now I'm going to go back to object mode and I have my cup. Now I'm going to go to modifiers, which is like this wrench icon, and I'm going to add a solidify modifier, which is going to give the cup some thickness. And I want the thickness to be um, going um, outwards, right? Not inwards. So I'll just change the offset to one and change the thickness to be zero point, um, let's see, zero seven maybe. Right, and then make sure even thickness is on, and that's my cup. So I'm gonna go and click on the arrow and apply that, and then I'm gonna add my backdrop. So I'll do Shift A, and then I'll do Mesh Plane, and then I'll press on S to scale the plane to make it larger. I'm gonna go into Edit Mode, and I'm going to make sure I'm in Edge Select, and then I'm gonna go to Front View by pressing the button under the Escape key and hovering over Front, and I'm gonna select the back edge, and then E to extrude, but then Z to extrude along the blue axis, or the Z axis, or Z. All right, and I'm gonna go back into object mode, and then I'm going to go to the wrench icon and add a bevel, and that's gonna add a bevel to the edge. So by increasing the amounts and increasing the segments, it makes um, a backdrop. And so I'm gonna just apply that, I'm gonna right click and shade smooth so that the little lines disappear. And then I'm gonna press on S to scale, and then X to scale along the X axis, and just bring it down by pressing G and then Z to just bring it down a little bit like that. Maybe a little bit up until it kind of touches the bottom of the cup. All right, and then I'll go to Render Properties, not Render Properties, Render Preview to see it in action. So I'm going to select a color for the backdrop real quick. So I think I'm gonna go with yellow. Cycles, because this only works if it's in cycles. And then I'll go back to Material Properties and I'll change the roughness just a little bit, maybe towards the left. Um, maybe something like 0.210 and then have the IQR be 0.930. Alright, and that gives me more of the shape that I want. Alright, and then after that, I mean, now we have like our glass, right? Now it's time for... Um, the actual animation so for that i'm just going to go to object and add quick effects quick liquid um, and that's going to add a domain so i'm going to just press g to grab and then z to grab along the z axis which is the blue axis and just make sure that it's like on top of the um backdrop and not out of it um, or below it so the way to do this is to go to wireframe mode because you won't be able to actually see anything if you're not a wireframe mode. So for a liquid animation or a simulation, you need three things. You need your domain, your factor, and your flow. So the domain is uh, where your anim your liquid is going to be. It's like not going to get outside of this domain. Like liquid is going to stay within this yellow box. And then your effector is what's being affected by the liquid, and that is the cup. That's what's going to be affected by the liquid. And then the liquid is going to be... I usually do a shift A UV sphere and just do the G to grab and then Z to grab along the Z axis just to bring it up and then I'll kind of scale it down by pressing S and then do control A to apply the scale um, and then 
I'm going to go to physics properties and go to fluid and make sure that it's a flow because that's where the liquid is going to come from. And the flow type should be liquid and that's all you have to do for that. If I go to the cup, I need to change the type to the effector and make sure that is planar is on and give it a surface surface thickness of 0 0.5. Um, and the surface thickness and is planar being on both contribute to decreasing uh, the possibility of the liquid seeping through the cup. So that fixes that. And then for the domain, if I click on it, um, I just have to make sure that the resolution is around 64. Um, we'll increase it later, but then if I scroll down, mesh has to be selected, and that contributes or at least helps um, the flow or let Blender know that the flow is what's going to be, or like, let me rephrase, it's going to let Blender know that the mesh, which is this UV sphere, is what's going to be actually like the flow. Um, and then the last thing would be to go to render properties and to kind of just view everything. Um, I just need to make sure that the flow itself, whoops, that the flow itself has a material. So I'll go and add a material and make sure that it's white and it'll probably change later on. But um, now to actually play the animation, you go to physics properties for the domain. Um, if you can't find the box, just go to keyframe zero and just scroll down and go to replay, make sure it is resumable and control S before doing anything because it might crash. So 8.28.22, save Blender file and then just run it by pressing on play. All right, and that is what it's looking like, which is pretty cool. All right, and if you just let it run, it's gonna end up just playing by itself and looking like this, which is pretty cool. If I go to render preview though, I see, yeah, I see that it's like a liquid, it's kind of like water, and I don't want it to be water, I want it to be milk. So I'll go to material properties and make sure it, it goes from surface glass BSDF to, um, where is it, uh, principal BSDF, and then it should look uh, smooth like that, shade smooth, there we go. And then I'll hide the flow, so I'm going to go to the outliner and actually label this flow and I'll just hide it in the viewport and not only in the viewport but in the render preview, not the render preview but the render itself so it doesn't show up in my final render. And the reason these black lines are showing is because it's so transparent that it's kind of impossible to see so that's what I assume they're showing. Um, so now the last thing would be to, not really the last thing, I keep saying like the last thing, it's never the last thing. Um, just kind of scale this on the x-axis, so S and then X, and then go to front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front, and just simply doing control alt. Okay. Alright, if I just play that, I can kind of see where the ball starts. I don't know if I just want it to be a little bit more outwards, so control alt. Number. So basically, um, I think I'm going to start at keyframe 10. Uh, so that it just starts within the frame and then I'm gonna have it just move a little bit towards the right. So let me go numpad zero and then just do just move towards the right a bit. Alright, so then after that I'm going to go to my output folder and output properties. And I'm going to select a little folder and just select a folder for all of my 115 frames to render as PNG images. Um, so I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to go to blender, animations, and I think I already have one here, accept. And then just make sure file format is PNG and then just do control S and then render animation and it should start um, the animation process. But I just wanted to mention one more thing. I exited it out of the render. The last thing I would have to do is to go to output, no, to render properties and go to light paths and then make sure I change the direct lighting to 4 and the indirect lighting to 1 and then now um, you can start and render animation. Alright, and if I see right now all of my frames are rendered, not all of them, I think I stopped it at like 67 because I thought that was fine. And now I'm just going to go back to Blender and go to the top, scroll down, go to the plus, and then video editing, video editing, and just move this all the way towards the left. And I'll just add an image sequence, and I'm just going to go to that folder that I have prepared with all of those images, and I'm just going to select them all by shift selecting the first one, and then shift selecting the last one, and then add image strip. And then Blender's just putting all of the images together, and this is 
super super cool it looks it looks like really nice um and i find that having a resolution division of 60 i think it was 60 something um is better than having it let me just check real quick if i go to layout and i look at the domain it's uh and i go to physics properties it was 64 that's definitely better than like 90 because the higher you have it the more smoother it is and then the more liquidy it gets and it's like more than it's more like water than milk and so having this like thicker um kind of like material is like more realistic so i have a sound downloaded from yesterday and i have it linked in yesterday's log and i'll link it in today's log as well i think it's at the top it's called splash and um i have that downloaded already but i'm going to go and add sound and just go to my downloads and add that and then play it and that's pretty good all right i think what i'll do is i'll go to output properties and for the frame uh range i'll start it at 9 end it at 58 that should change the same thing over here control s and then render that one more time and this is the final result